This video is not to scare you about the RV refrigerator. It's to warn you about the dangers of uneducated technicians. Hello friends. This is Mike and Bobby. They've been having problems with their RV refrigerator uh, for the last couple of years, actually about three years. And I'm going to let them tell the story of what they've gone through. Um, so, go ahead and tell us, Mike. Okay, we, uh, the refrigerator would not get cold enough and the freezer not cold enough for my wife for sure. And it just wasn't, wouldn't get anywhere near uh, getting cold enough for the food or anything. And so what we decided to do is got on the internet and we researched and the only place that came up that did work most of the time on refrigerators that we found was called Fridge House. And so we called them and really couldn't communicate through the phone much, but my wife emailed them. And the young man, one of the Jerry. brothers, Jerry, uh, sent her back a glowing email after my wife wrote a very long email about exactly what was happening with our refrigerator. She would monitor it for hours and make sure to tell him that if it was empty and on electric, it would go from here to here to here and back. It's just the actual graph. And he says, oh, no problem. Get somebody to pull it out and you send it or you come to us. Uh, we went to the shop. And when we arrived at the shop, we should have been smarter. Because when we arrived at the shop, it was a dump. It was unbelievable, and, and all we could, only thing I thought must be happening is inside this dump is a nice clean room kind of shop that they're overhauling and working on these things. Because I was in the Navy for a long time, and we had clean rooms that we would work on precise instruments. And that would do things correctly, like I'm sitting in a, a, a shop right now that is like a clean room. As far as working on these, I could believe this shop could do that work. He spent two days. He pulled it. Uh, one of the brothers, Jerry, uh, told us about it. His brother James, James did it. came into the motorhome, pulled it out, laid it on the floor, took the cooling unit portion of it out of the refrigerator and went inside. Uh, disappeared and came back out and said, oh, we had to, it was plugged up and we've had to cut it and we had to flush it and so it's going to take overnight instead of just that one day and put in a different one or something. It's going to take overnight. Okay, so we stayed the night and uh, then the following day he come back out and he said, oh yeah, we found uh, it was plugged and we flushed it and we recharged it. And now, and now I think I'm ready to put it back together again. So, do you remember what you about? Well, I know that we stayed there because um, we didn't want to leave unless it was working. And mm -hmm. he convinced us that it was just going to take longer to get cold and that we would be fine. So, we needed to go on our way. We, we were heading to California because my daughter was needed us out there. So we left and immediately we realized, like the very next day, we realized things just simply weren't working right. And we tried to call them. And the day after that, we called them five different times, leaving messages, never getting an answer. And we finally got, I think accidentally, we got the wife of one of the guys on the phone. And she says, oh, well, it's very common. We think there's just an air block, so you need to turn it off for 24 hours and then turn it back on again. So we did that, and of course, same situation again. You have to wait for it to get cold, and it's going to take days, and you know. And you're so further we're, down the road. And we're further down the road because we're moving around. We had to, we were in California for about six months while we were there, and of course, we didn't contact them most of the time we were there. Tried, but when she said we called them five or six times. Because we recognized after the first two or three times they will not return phone calls or messages. They will not return them. But if you call once, enough, once in a while they'll pick it up by accident. <laughs> and so sometimes when we would call five or six times, somebody's picked up the phone by accident. And in fact, there were times, a couple of times, they picked it up and then essentially it got disconnected. Even in that conversation. But it was <laughs> obvious. We knew by then we were 
in trouble. But we figured, okay, finally when my daughter, we controlled the situation, we were going to come back from California to Florida, we live in Florida, and on the way there we would stop. And uh, they kept telling us, well, we don't know when you can fit in this and fit in that. And then all of a sudden we, were, we called and said, okay, we are going to be coming through there. Got to make, somehow just look at this and tell me what's wrong. Well, James just broke his wrist and you won't be able to see anybody for six more weeks. So we went on back to Florida and we thought, on the internet, we had trouble finding a place that repaired this. We did not have the real reputable people. We had the Arkansas people as the only ones we found. And so we thought there wasn't any place else I could really get this refrigerator overhauled and working correctly. And my understanding, as novice as I am, to fix my refrigerator, it was going to have to bump out the, the windshield in front because it's a double wide. I was told that by a number of people, even in camper world. And once you pull that out, then they're going to have a team of people come in and they're going to put a new refrigerator in. And we were at the edge of having to do that until we found a new number, a new people that have a class that teach people how to roll all of these. And the first thing I said is that we're going there. But right. before all that, uh, we kept contacting them trying to get an appointment. Uh, and I've got all kinds of dates where I co we called them two or three times a day and they kept putting us off, putting us off. So finally, sometime in June of 2017, by the way, that's when we're on, and we had this repaired in April of 2016. So finally, a year later, they're giving us an appointment. So we were going for that appointment. So we did. We drove all the way up there from Pensacola, Florida, all the way to Plummerville, Arkansas. And we got there, and we were there, I think, uh, August 22nd, August 19th, 20th, something like that, of 2017. And you can tell pretty much what happened while we were there. Okay, so we pulled in there, and all along they're telling us they have warranty on all their equipment, and total warranty, in fact, when we left there. We were covered under warranty. And then, so when he gendered his wrist, I said, are we still covered under a warranty? Because you keep pushing me off, pushing me off. Oh yeah, no problem. So we pulled in, uh, he came out, he, James again, laid it on the floor, pulled the back off, and then he had the cooling unit in his hands. And he said, oh, by the way, <laughs> at this point, oh, by the way, the machine that we, fixed for you. That's warranty. My labor's not warranty. You know, I, I can almost understand that, but why didn't he tell me that from the beginning yes, so right. that I can make a, a, an informed decision? He had it in his hand and he said, there is a fee for labor. Now, if you don't want to pay it, I'm going to sit it down and leave right now. He actually told me that and I knew I was already in trouble before he started, so I'm committed. What am I going to do? I said, Okay, and it gave me some $250 Plus it was a different numbers. location than before. Oh, he had already been kicked out and of his other And he was by years. himself now. He wasn't with Jerry anymore. Jerry was still involved. Oh, was he? He's still a paperwork guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, I said, yeah, go ahead and do it. I mean, I drove from Arkansas. It's sitting on the floor. And I think this time it was $250. Already a beast got in his hand. But I mean, what am I going to do? Right. And, um, so I said, yeah, go to work on it. Go ahead, finish it. So several hours later, he went on in, he brought it back out several hours, only two or three hours later, and said, okay, we had to cut it, weld on it, flush it, and recharge it. So your total warranty's in good shape now. And so he put it back together, and he put it, he put the refrigerator back in, and by then his one assistant that was helping him, helped him lift it and jam it in there, and then he left. So he couldn't get it in straight, so he's got his back up against the wall with both feet on the front of the refrigerator, pushing it into the hole, and it never really got seated or set right, and it's cocked about that much on the bottom. And, uh, and I said, you know, it's not really right. He said, oh, well, they have to be level. That's level now. Okay, now why don't we ask uh, Mr. Ford if he will tell the things that he found that were wrong? Well, first of all, um, 
If you're going to go to anybody to get anything reconditioned, whether it's a refrigerator or anything, you need to do the research. That internet is there. It, it, uh, resources are accessible. Do some research. Um, I'm sure you wish you'd have done a little more in the beginning. Well, we didn't the find the, right. the difference between refrigerator and refrigeration. Right. Because you didn't come up under refrigeration. If we'd found your name first, this is where yeah. we've been. But it puzzles me that they said they had to keep it overnight because they had to cut it, weld it, flush it. But the second time you were there, they're saying they did the exact same thing and they did it in just a few hours, two or three hours. He did have an answer for that. He said the first time, by the time he got it out, the gentleman who does it, they had this um, elderly person that worked in the back that does this for him, was already gone home. The second time, he said, oh, they were all, they were all there. I didn't see anybody else there, but it's in their <coughs> secret clean room, I thought. Right, okay. Um, basically, when we, they got here, we troubleshot. Um, in the bypass and the controls, the cooling unit would do absolutely nothing. Uh, there was some heat at the bottom of the cooling unit, no cooling in any way. Um, we recommended that we didn't want to do anything else with that particular cooling unit. We didn't have one in stock, so we ordered one for them, a new Dometic. Did we not witness okay. some additional welded pieces yeah, on it? Yeah, tell us about the other things you found. <laughs> yeah, they, they had welded some other pieces on the unit, something I'd never seen before and don't have any logical explanation. So, when we were changing out the cooling unit, what we found was um, some other things wrong. One, they had broken the condensation drain and they kind of glued a part of it that they had on the inside of the refrigerator so they wouldn't notice it, uh, but it wasn't draining properly at all. And there was some other issues, but you know, poor workmanship is one thing, but the one thing that really I found upsetting is that it was a Dometic cooling unit. A Dometic cooling unit in the, the stem, in the valve, has a safety on it that if this cooling unit ever overheats or there's a, a extremely and if there's a, or if there's a fire in the RV, this melts. It's a low temp melting, and it releases the charge instead of exploding because it is charged with hydrogen. Every unit has a safety on it. This is an original Dometic service stem. And they had you had that on yours when you got there, but when we got it out, for some reason they had changed it, and they put. Uh, another stem on it that does not have a safety, an aftermarket. So in other words, they were driving around with a cooling unit with no safety that if their RV ever caught on fire or anything, it would have exploded. Um, and like I said, poor workmanship is one thing, but this, this is safety. Um, somebody could have been possibly injured or it could have been fatal. And the reason we're making this video and the reason they're helping us is to help educate uh, other RV owners that this doesn't happen to them. Look, do the research. And if you get there, and, and like he said, the place was a dump, that throws up a red flag to you. You know, do some research then if you haven't. Even if you're wanting to come here, do research us, you know, check everybody out before you go and have somebody work on something. I'd like to make one comment of something that happened with us that I didn't discover until later. You know, I read the reviews, but they were reviews that were on their website. Whatever you do, go to the Better Business Bureau and look up this company. Once I did that, I was horrified. And I told my husband, I said, we're going to be lucky if they help us at all because they are definitely jipping a lot of people. There were all kinds of write-ups about people that had sent them money for a new cooling unit, had never gotten the cooling unit, never got their money back. There are all kinds of horrified stories on the Better Business Bureau, so that's one place to Or actually it. received their cooling unit and money and got, and got nothing back. I was just remembering why we went there. He told me for sure part of the reason our refrigerator had busted this way and wasn't functioning is because somebody did not leave it turned on mm, okay. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Anytime you leave it unplugged, if you any short amount of time, it can come up. They said it produces a precipitate. 
the reaction produces a precipitate. And when you turn it off, all that precipitate settles to the bottom and solidifies and plugs up the cooling unit. This so this filter. entire so year... So you have to keep it running so the precipitate stays in... Wow. So this place. entire year that we were discussing trying to get back to see him, trying to get a date from him when the wrist was or whatever, I kept it plugged in, right. in, in my pole line. Which was costing you money. Oh, of course. And but the refrigerator was, it was overheating. The doing whole time. damage. Probably. Right. You, know, you do not have to let the RV refrigerator run all the time. You can shut it off any time you want. Uh, if you're going to leave it off for a long period of time, you want to fire it up maybe once every two or three months just to circulate the uh, rust inhibitor through the system. But everything has a lifespan. Everything mechanical. And the more you run it, you're using up that lifespan and it's sitting there and you're not, you're not using it. Some of the times it was sitting in storage. How um, important is it to be level when you're storing yeah, it? Yeah, it's critical yeah. for it to be level. When now, it's being stored too? No, no, no. When it's no. being stored, if it's in the off position, it doesn't matter what oh. position it's in. Okay. Um, not in any way. When it's running, it does need to be level. I mean, you don't have to be perfect right on zero, perfect level, but it needs to be close. Uh, if you're ever running it and you think it's a little out of level, if you're not satisfied with the temperature, then get out there and, and do a little more leveling. Um, but check out every, everybody that you're going to do business with. Uh, I really appreciate you making the video to help educate other RV owners because I don't want them to go through what you did and especially the safety issue that's just unacceptable. So thank you for making the video. Okay, okay that would be good. Thank you very much. So Thank people, you. do the research, don't get ripped off, and uh, stay cool, GBY, egg wine.